This cauliflower soup is the perfect winter weeknight dinner. It's wholesome but creamy, super easy to make, and it makes a huge batch, so it's great for meal prep. And it's just really forking delicious. To get started on our soup, we'll cut the cauliflower into florets. And I'm taking a paring knife and just running it around the base, the bottom of the cauliflower to remove the leaves. Then we'll take the knife and run it around the core in a circular fashion. Eventually this will loosen up the core enough so you can just pop it off. And now it's really easy to pick off the florets. It's also really satisfying to just like pull one of these off. And the great thing is that you don't even have to cut these very much unless you get like and a normal one like this because the cauliflower florets are going to cook down pretty quickly and then we'll blend everything at the end. And that's one of the reasons I love this soup. The reasons I love the reasons I love the You lost a florit. That is why I love this soup. It has a very high reward to effort ratio. Just a few minutes of prep, a few minutes of active cook time, and you end up with this super flavorful and nourishing dinner. In a minute, I'll show you my favorite technique for infusing any soup with lots of flavor. But for now, we're going to chop up one large yellow onion. So this onion is surprisingly not very pungent, but if you're someone who has sensitive baby eyes, can we say baby eyes? Then I highly recommend getting some onion goggles. Not only will you look super cool, but it will also change your life. I will chop up four cloves of garlic. No need to finely chop it. A rough chop is okay because everything will get blended at the end. And this is all the chopping we need to do for this recipe. So now we'll move on to our cashews and white beans. We're using these ingredients for two reasons. First, they're gonna make the soup ultra creamy, way creamier than if you were to use something dairy-based like heavy cream. And two, they're gonna make the soup bulky. It's not what I meant to say. They're going to bulk up this soup because they've got lots of protein, fiber, and healthy fat. So it's gonna help you stay full for a long time. For the cashews, we're just gonna cover them in boiling water for just 15 minutes. That's going to help soften them up. So when it comes time to blending the soup, the consistency is gonna be super smooth. We're using two cans of cannellini beans and these beans are so naturally creamy. So they work great in the soup. The last thing we'll prep is our bouquet garni, which is my absolute favorite way to infuse so much depth of flavor into soups. A bouquet garni sounds like a fancy French word, it is, but the concept is really simple, I promise. Just grab some fresh herbs. I've got rosemary and thyme today and some bay leaves. We're gonna tie them up with some kitchen twine into a little bundle. And best of all, you don't have to spend any time chopping up fresh herbs, but you still infuse the soup with so much deep flavor. As an aside, whenever I have leftover herbs that will otherwise go bad or are on their last legs, I like to preserve them to reduce my food waste. First, roughly chop up the herbs. This works great with sturdy herbs like rosemary, thyme, sage, and oregano. Then add the herbs to an ice cube tray. You can eyeball it or measure out a teaspoon or a tablespoon of the herbs so you know how much is in each serving. And cover the herbs with some olive oil. Pop them in the freezer, and once these olive oil herb cubes are frozen, you have these flavor bombs that you can use in everyday cooking. This is a great way to infuse flavor into pasta or veggies or beans for a quick weeknight meal or when you don't have fresh herbs on hand. Everything is prepped, so let's head on over to the stove. Heat up a bit of olive oil in a Dutch oven or soup pot over medium heat. Once it's nice and hot, we'll add our onions. We wanna get the most flavor out of the onions, so to do that, we'll season with a bit of salt, and then we'll let them cook down for about eight to 10 minutes until they've got some really nice golden brown color on them. Now it's time for our garlic. It just needs like two minutes, and it already smells amazing. By this point, you'll start to see some sticky brown bits on the bottom of your pot, AKA the fawn. Hey. The fawn is where a lot of flavor lives so to incorporate all of that back into the soup, we're gonna deglaze the pan. Just add a bit of vegetable broth and it should start bubbling immediately and you can scrape up everything using a wooden spoon. Add the remainder of your vegetable broth along with the cashews, cauliflower, cannellini beans, salt and pepper, of course, and I love adding nutritional yeast here. It adds this backbone of umami that really brings the whole soup together. We'll give everything a stir and then tuck in our bouquet garni into the soup. Make sure it's submerged. From here, just bring it up to a boil and then lower the heat to a rapid simmer. This soup is gonna taste like it's been simmering for a really long time, but you only need 15 minutes. You'll know the soup is done when your cauliflower is fork tender. So now just remove the bouquet garni and we'll blend up our soup. So if you don't mind a rustic kind of chunky texture, you can just go ahead and 
blend the soup in the pot with an immersion blender. Personally, I prefer a super smooth, silky texture, so I'm gonna transfer the soup to my Vitamix and blend it in two batches. Be sure to take the center cap off from your blender so it doesn't trap the steam from the hot soup and explode all over your kitchen. I just use a kitchen towel instead to cover the blender. And you wanna blend it until it's really smooth and creamy. In a minute, I'm gonna show you three crucial ingredients you have to add to your soup before serving, but let me first show you how to store the soup so you can have a quick meal in your freezer whenever you want. Whenever I make a big batch of soup like this and I feel like I'm not gonna get through all of it in a few days, I like to freeze the rest in individual portions using my super cubes. You can pop these super cubes in the freezer and once they're frozen, just stack them in a reusable bag so they take up less space in your freezer. Make sure to add some parchment paper between each block so they don't stick together. And that way, when you're hungry and your fridge is empty, you can just grab a block and quickly defrost it on the stove. Back to serving the soup, whatever you do, do not skip these final touches. These three ingredients are what take the soup from good to gourmet. First, lemon zest, which is going to bring this bright citrusy zing that will freshen up this creamy winter soup. Next up, we've got some chili flakes. You could just use your standard crushed red pepper flakes, but today I'm using Aleppo pepper. It's milder, it's a little fruity, it's just overall delightful in so many recipes. It's also a great option for all the baby mouths out there. And a drizzle of extra virgin olive oil, which is gonna bring a rich body and luxurious mouthfeel to this soup even though it's going to be a wholesome plant-based meal. And since we're finishing the recipe with olive oil instead of cooking with it, this is a good opportunity to use your best olive oil. I know it can be challenging in the winter to find recipes that are both hearty and nourishing, so I put together a short playlist of some of my favorites right here. 